Hi everybody, I'm Ben the Spider Seeker, and today we'll be building Minerva here, a new home, and we'll call it Minerva's Den. Minerva is a relatively large female Hadronici Vesuta, or Blue Mountains Funnelweb. She's not always that happy to see me, as you can see in this picture. Now, the thing about Hadronici species, as opposed to Atrax species in the Funnelweb family, is that Hadronici seem to like to burrow a bit more sideways versus the Atrax which are happy with an up and down burrow. Now here, this is about the only enclosure I had available for her at the time, which is suited to Atrax, but not so much Hadronici. So you can see there I was just pointing out a burrow at the top and we've got sticks laid out around. The sticks are to try and make her feel a little more at home because that's similar to what I found her in. The burrow is in the hopes that she'll see that space and use it as a starting point for any future burrowing she does. And you can see she calms down relatively quickly after getting in because she feels those sticks and she can't immediately see me because she's facing away from me. So she feels that little bit safer. She's still tense, but she feels that little bit safer. She can also feel just off to her left there, a little burrow, and she goes straight for it and starts into it. Unfortunately, she wasn't particularly happy with the new home, so she's now modified it. And you can see she's done a lot more burrowing, so she's covered over the sticks and twigs I had laid around with the soil. She's also webbed over the entire top of the enclosure. Now the burrow system she's put in has a lot more complexity to it. So initially she burrowed straight down and right around the circumference of the bottom. Now she's got another burrow that seems to be right around the middle. And here we're coming up to a webbed section which was her original burrow. And then her new burrow entrance starts off from this point. So she needs a new home now. And this is going to be it. So you can see now, it's going to need some work. So I've got an old saw, some goggles, and on the other side of the table, I've got a hebel brick, a drill, and some drill bits. Now the drill bits consist of two masonry bits, two sideways carving bits, and a relatively cheap, normal, large drill bit. Now the reason they're all cheap, and didn't come out of any sets that cost me over $5, is because drilling through Hebrew is hard and it wears out tools. This saw, it's worn out, won't cut through wood anymore, but still rips through the Hebrew pretty well. Next up, trace out the burrow and start carving it with the drill bits. Now, I'm just using any drill bit that happens to seem like it's going to do what I want it to at the time. So I started with the normal drill bit and then the sideways carving bits, and now I'm on to the masonry bit. Now I find it easiest with the masonry bit to get it going and drag it sideways along the burrow. Gives a relatively smooth finish and you'll see it in a second but does fill it up with dust pretty easily. Now Hebel brick is aerated concrete, pretty soft, to the point where I can clean it up with a wire brush and a butter knife which is exactly what I do in the next step. So all I'm doing is rubbing over the entire surface with the wire brush and just sort of cleaning up the edges with the drill and butter knife. So I've decided as well to drill through to the other side just to get some soil into the burrow. And next up, I'm just going to be putting some clay over the surface that's going to be against the glass. Now, this is solely for appearance, no other purpose. But the reason I'm using clay is because I can't easily get clay based paints where I am. And the reason I use clay instead of normal paint is because I know it's got nothing else in it. So no anti-mold or fast drying agents which can sometimes affect spiders. Next up I'm drilling out a cavity for a water tube and a sponge. This will just increase the humidity in the burrow a little bit and always remember to clamp your work. But I'm just passing through with the drill once, and then checking if the tube fits, which it does after two. 
And then I do the same thing with the sponge, but at some point get too close to the edge and chip out the bottom. This is an issue because it doesn't actually impact the burrow. I just have to patch it up a bit later with either silicon or clay. And I'm just doing another coat of clay just to fill in those gaps. Next up, I'm going to be sealing the burrow into the tank. To do this, I use 100% silicon. And before that, I cut the tube to length and make sure that it's in position and I'm happy with where the burrow is before I start the silicon process. Now, once I do start the silicon, I'll eventually, when I've put enough around, rub it in with the finger to get it into the gaps and tidy up any spots on the glass that I don't want silicon, just with an old rag. While the silicon's drying, I like to prepare the substrate if I don't already have some. So I just use a peat brick. Now I sometimes use a mallet and palette knife to break it up, but usually just the knife is enough and I'll carve it up a bit and break it into smaller pieces so that when it's soaking up the water, it just works a little easier. When it's done, it looks like this and after a while it'll soak in the water and look like this. So there's about one and a half bricks in there I won't use the whole thing in building this enclosure, but I like to be prepared. So I finish up the first day's work when I'm waiting on the silicon and the clay to dry so I can put in the substrate. So I just leave it overnight and come back the next day when all of the silicon, all of the clay is dry and I'm ready to put the substrate in. For substrate, I'm just using peat. I'm packing it in around the base and around the brick I'm also using a piece of paper just to make sure the burrow from the other side doesn't get filled in. And I've got a little tube wedged into the burrow entrance to make sure I don't fill it in from that side either. Now the reason I'm only using peat instead of a peat sand mix is because I want to keep the humidity up in here. The funnel webs tend to like humid environments, so anything I can do to help maintain a bit of moisture in the enclosure is probably going to help. The next thing I want to deal with is this hole here and this hole here in the lid. Now, to do that, I use a small screw container that I had lying around. It just happens to fit that little section well. Now I cut it up to shape and just use an epoxy glue to glue it in place. Now the reason I want to block those holes is I don't think the funnel web will actually climb out of the enclosure that way because they can't really climb glass all that well. But with a funnel web, I prefer to be safe rather than sorry. So I prefer to block up any holes which could potentially lead to an escape. Next up, we want to cover the burrow because burrows should be dark. And if it's not dark, it's very unlikely that the funnel web will happily use the burrow. So I'll just use some MDF I had lying around and take some measurements. I'm not too fussed about it being exact. That's why I'm not really using any guides or the table saw. Just cutting through it with the hand saw just to get the rough shape. All I want to do is make sure it's covered. Now I do trim it up a bit just to get that angle in it. And now I'm just neatening up the edges and I'll use a file to just take away one of the edges so I can use it as a handle. Next up, I'm wanting a mechanism to be able to put it on and take it off. Now what I wanna do is have some magnets like that. Now I'm going to, once I've got those magnets in position where I'm happy, tape them all off and use the epoxy glue again to glue them in place on the glass. Now I'm clamping the magnets to the cover just with other magnets on the other side that are taped in position. Now I put some tape down to mix the epoxy resin and use that very carefully, just dabbing it on the magnets and fixing it in position and being very careful not to move it. 
once I take off the tape, I'm happy. Now I'm going for a particular look. So I want to have some rounded, sort of rivet end almost looking sections to hold the magnets in place on the MDF. Now, it's not the safest way of rounding off the end. As you can see, I eventually get a clamp, but it works fairly effectively. Now, as long as the dowel you're doing this with isn't full of splinters, it's fairly okay to do this. But then I end up with five neatly rounded off little sections that I can place. And once I've checked the polarity of the magnets that I'm using, and I'm happy with where they're placed, I try and keep track of everything, and I use, again, the epoxy glue just to glue those little nibs that I just made in place, holding also the magnets in place, and just double checking the magnets are in. The final stage is decorating. Now, I'm just using some bark and sticks I've picked up, and every now and then you'll see me throw some away that just already had a spider in it. There's only so many spiders you can handle in a spider enclosure. But I'm using this because this is essentially what I found Minerva in, so I don't want her to be in anything too unnatural for her. Now after a coat of paint, I'm fairly happy with the result. So inside of the cover is a matte black, and the outside can be pretty much any colour you want. I just picked black on the inside because I feel like it just makes it a little bit darker for the fun of it. And eventually I put her in. Now my next video will be the transferring process with a little surprise in the middle. Hope to see you then.